Hello, I am Mohammed Dashti and in this video I will present our paper Transaction Repair for Multivergent Concurrency Control published in Sigma 2017. Optimistic MVCC is awesome and it is used in many famous commercial and open source database systems because of its efficiency. In Optimistic MVCC, each transaction can see a committed snapshot of the database as of the time it started. Then, read-only transactions never fail because they read the committed data. The changes done by read-write transactions will remain hidden from other transactions, and these transactions go through a validation phase which they have to succeed in order to commit and make their versions visible to the later transactions. Now, the question is, how should we do the validation? Well, there are mainly two major approaches used for validation in optimistic MVCC. The most commonly used approach checks whether the read set of a transaction is still valid at the validation time while being cautious about the phantoms. So for each transaction, the whole set of read objects is stored during execution and used for validation. For example, if a transaction reads a million objects, it should store these million objects to use them in the validation. There is another approach that is predicate based and is proposed in Sigma 2015, which is based on a variation of precision locking that was introduced in 80s. If we want to look more into the predicate based approach, first we need to know what are the predicates. Casually speaking, a predicate represents the very clause of a query. Let me explain it using an example. This is a simple transaction program for transferring money from an account to another, while you also need to pay a transaction fee to a central fee account. In this example, the predicates are highlighted. For instance, in the first query that we are reading the debit account information, the predicate is the equality check between the ID field of the account table and the transaction input parameter. Now that we know what predicates are, the next question is how can we use them? During the execution of the program, instead of gathering the red objects, we gather the predicates, these small condition objects. In addition, we also need to gather the versions written by each transaction, normally called write set, but here we refer to it as on the buffer. Then at validation time, when we want to validate a transaction T, we go over all of its predicates and check whether there is any match between these predicates and a version in the on the buffer of another transaction that committed during the execution time of T. If no match is found, it means that T read the most recent data and is good to go and commit. Otherwise, if you find a match, it means that T should have read that committed version and instead read a stale version. Therefore, it fails validation. Now, if a transaction fails validation, what should we do? The mainstream approach is to abort and restart the transaction, which means the entire computation is thrown away. Well, that's really unfortunate. Can't we really do better? Let's think more about predicates. They seem to have a greater potential other than only being used for validation. What we know by now is that the transaction is valid if all of its predicates are valid. However, the validity of each individual predicate also tells us what and where it went wrong. Another interesting characteristic of a predicate is that the data read using a predicate is fed into only its dependent operations. Then, logically, if a predicate fails, we only need to roll back and restart its dependent operations. So, we have these extra observations about the predicates, now how can we use them? I now present our algorithm that can leverage these features for transaction repair. Our algorithm is named MV3C and stands for MVCC with closures. I will explain MV3C in four steps. In the first step, we write the transaction program in MV3C domain specific language, which is a simple library for encoding the dependency information among operations, specifically between a predicate and its dependent operations. For instance, we see the transfer money program illustrated in MV3C DSL. As you see, almost the whole program depends on predicate 1, which reads the account information for the debit account. However, the second and third predicates only have a few dependent operations. We encapsulate all the dependent operations of a predicate and we call it the closure of the predicate. 
This step can be automated for PLSQL-like languages, but in the interest of time, I will not go into the details of this automatic conversion. Now that we have encoded the dependency information inside the program, it's ready for execution. During the execution, the predicates are gathered. In addition, we also gather the relationship between predicates in the form of a DAC. For example, after running an instance of transfer money program, a predicate graph with three nodes is created. Here is a snapshot of the execution of several transaction programs. Even though it seems very complex, but it's actually very simple. Here we have T3, which is an instance of transfer money program that is already committed, and two other transactions, TY and TZ, that is started after T3 and are running concurrently. We can see the predicate graph for the running transactions, TY and TZ, and the undo buffer for all transactions. After the execution is over, in the third step, validation is done by traversing the predicate graph in topological sort order and checking the validity of each predicate. If a predicate is invalid, none of its child predicates need to be checked for validity. Let's assume TY reaches validation first, and because there was no other transaction committed during its execution time, it succeeds. Then TZ reaches validation, and while checking the validity of predicate P3, it finds a match with a version written by TY for the fee account. Therefore, it is marked as invalid and TZ fails validation. Now, in the case that the transaction, like TZ, fails validation, MV3C repairs it in three steps. First, the failed predicates are cleaned up. The cleanup consists of removing all the versions created by the closure of the failed predicate, then cleaning up and removing all its child predicates. In our example, P3 does not have any child predicates, but it has a version bound to it and we remove it in this step. Then, we need a new start timestamp for the transaction, because if we keep the same old start timestamp, the program reads the stale data again. The final step is to fix the results of the failed predicates and re-executing the closures bound to them. In our example, P3 is the new version written by TY for the fee account and then executes the closure bound to it, which creates a new version for the fee account. Then, it reaches validation, and this time, it successfully commits. OK, now that we have a transaction repair mechanism, let's see why it's beneficial. MV3C matters the most in two main scenarios. The first scenario is when we have high contention data objects. When we have a high contention object in our workload, where almost all transactions alter it, then among even thousands of concurrent transactions, only one can succeed validation which leads to a serial execution of transactions. As an example, in the abort and restart approach, if we have four transactions that run concurrently, the first one succeeds validation and the rest fail. When they restart, the same thing happens again and again until all of them succeed validation. However, using MV3C, instead of running the whole transaction again, we only have to repair a potentially small portion of the transaction, thus partially solving the issue. For the second scenario, imagine a workload with a mixed set of long-running and short-running transactions that usually conflict with each other. Then, in the abort and restart approach, the short-running transactions will always jump in front of the long-running ones and commit which in extreme cases can lead to starvation for the long-running transaction. Here, transaction uh, T1 and T2 are running concurrently and T2 being the smaller transaction commits first. Then T1 fails validation because of a conflict with T2. However, even during the second uh, round of execution of T1, another small transaction T3 starts and commits. And T1 fails again and it can go on forever. However, using MV3C, since the transactions are repaired and only the conflicting sections are re-executed, long-running transactions are not punished unfairly. Here, T1 and T2 start off similar to the previous case. However, as only the conflicting portions is executed, T1 can finish execution and commit before T3 starts. Now, the next question is, when can we save? 
there are three high-level cases where one can benefit from MV3C. The first case is when there are two logically disjoint sections in the program, then if one section fails validation and the other one succeeds, we only need to repair the failed section. The second case is when a conflict happens after a substantial amount of work is done in a sequence of operations. Then only the conflicted portions at the end need to be repaired while reusing the computation from the first section. The third case is when a conflict occurs for a predicate with a heavy result set. In this case, instead of reevaluating the result set, we can accommodate the incremental changes into the result set, then re-execute the operations dependent on this result set. More complex cases can be built using a combination of these high-level cases. For example, here is the transfer money program which we saw earlier. This example represents the second case, where the operations in the green section of the program will rarely have a conflict, because what are the odds of having multiple operations done on the same account at the same time? But the operation in the red section will always lead to a conflict because all transfer money transactions will alter this fee account. Now let's look at some of the challenges that one has to overcome to implement such a transaction repair mechanism. The first challenge is to ensure a minimal overhead from adding a transaction repair mechanism to a concurrency control algorithm, because this would be a cost that will be paid by all transactions, regardless of whether they have a conflict or not. Overcoming this challenge makes it possible for the transaction repair mechanism to be a candidate for being a part of a general purpose concurrency control algorithm, rather than being used for specific workloads. The only overhead of MV3C is to maintain a predicate graph instead of a list of predicates. Thus, it has almost no overhead compared to predicate-based optimistic MVCC. The second challenge is to be able to quickly pinpoint the conflicting portions of the transactions and repair them. And the real challenge is to be faster than abort and restart. Otherwise, it makes little or no sense to use the transaction repair approach. We dealt with this challenge by associating predicates with their closures. Now, if a predicate fails validation, we know exactly which operations to re-execute, which is its closure. Next, we look at some experimental results. We have several benchmarks to evaluate the efficiency of MV3C compared to the predicate-based optimistic MVCC. Here, I will present our trading benchmark which simulates a simplified trading system to trade securities for customers. In this benchmark, we have four tables, security, customer, trade, and trade line, and two transactions, price update and trade order. Price update is used for updating the price of a given security, and trade order receives an encrypted list of securities to be traded for a given customer and stores the details of this trade in the encrypted format in trade and trade line tables. The encryption and decryption operations required in this transaction is common in this type of application for security reasons, and is also a good candidate for showing the impact of MV3C as the transaction involves more computation-intensive operations. First, we want to show the impact of an increase in the amount of conflicts and see how MV3C performs compared to the predicate-based optimistic MVCC. In this experiment, we fix the amount of parallelism to be 10 worker threads. Then we increase the conflicts by changing the parameter of the Zipfian distribution used for selecting securities. In this figure, y-axis is throughput and higher is better. This figure shows that MV3C performs only slightly better for parameter value 1 where there are fewer conflicts. Then as conflicts increase, MV3C is less affected as compared to the predicate-based optimistic MVCC and performs more than twice as fast for parameter value 2.4. The next aspect that we want to look at is the impact of increasing the concurrency level. For this purpose, we fix the amount of conflict and change the concurrency level from a single thread to 11 threads. Similar to the previous graph, the y-axis in this figure also shows throughput and higher is better. As you see, by increasing the level of parallelism, MVCC scales better compared to the predicate-based optimistic MVCC in presence of conflicts.
To summarize, in this talk, I introduced MV3C, which is a conflict resolution and transaction repair mechanism for optimistic MVCC. It works best for workloads with high contention data objects or long-running transactions. The key ideas behind MV3C are exposing the program dependencies to the concurrency control algorithm and also associating correctness checks used in the validation phase with blocks of code. Also, I show that in our experiments, MV3C performs better compared to optimistic MVCC in presence of conflicts and has almost no overhead. Thank you for your attention and I invite you to read our full paper in the proceedings of SIGMOD 2017. You can also find a link to it in the comments.